How's it going guys, it's Jake Reed coming back at you with a really important video today, something you're not going to want to miss, uh, something that's going to help you out a lot here on Madden 20. Now this is a video that I made in bits and pieces last year, but I decided this is going to be the title of the video for it this year. It's going to be how to play defense against the AI on Madden 20. Now this is really important because as last year, it's it's very similar to last year, but it's very difficult to play defense against the AI and stop them because the quarterbacks are really accurate, and the runners break a lot of tackles, they get blocks really easily, and so there's a few things, five things specifically, that you can do to beat the AI on defense and really just prepare yourself to face any situation that they have you'll be able to beat them because you're going to know these five tips now the first thing that you're going to want to understand is the composition of your team now i'm going to go ahead and hop into a franchise and let you guys know that you need to focus on what players can do what and that's really important you need to know what your team is capable of for you to call plays correctly so very simply put you need to know if your team's a zone defense a man defense do you have good pass rushers do you not have good pass rushers do you have fast pass rushers do you have slow pass rushers and do you have defensive ends that are pass rushers or outside linebackers that are pass rushers now all of those things are very important, and so you're going to want to know what your team is made up of in order to call plays. Now, I'm not going to get too much into it, but I want to give you guys one good example, and that is your corners. The, the best thing you can do for your corners, for example, and you're going to want to do this with every position, understand how the ins and outs work of each position, and I'm going to put videos up on the channel of each position and how to evaluate what you should be doing with those positions and what stats matter. So do me a favor and leave a comment down below right now which positions you specifically need help with and I'll put that video up first in addition to that leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel now my corners here in this Chargers franchise the one thing that you're gonna want to note with the corners 90 speed is about what you want 90 speed and above for corners if you're gonna match up man-to-man -man with wide receivers most wide receivers are gonna have around 90 or better speed so what you can see off the bat is that my two best corners are lacking in the speed department. That's really important. That, that already indicates to me that this team should maybe run a little bit less man coverage than you normally would, or they might need to run more press coverage in order to jam the receivers and not allow them to get off the line of scrimmage. So what you'll then want to do, you'll want to consider what are their stats. Well, Casey Hayward is good at both man and zone coverage, so that's not a big deal, and he's really good at press. So I can make up for the fact that he has one speed difference by putting him down in uh, man coverage or zone coverage, you know, whatever I want to do or press him. However, one thing that you want to consider, Desmond King, who only has 88 speed, he has really good zone coverage. He has really good man coverage, but better zone coverage. And so he's going to be better in zone. And the other thing to note is that since he has 88 speed, He's probably going to be really good as a slot corner. The slot corner doesn't need to have as much speed because they're not covering deep. They're not covering outside. So you want to know that you can go into your depth chart and you can switch the position uh, in the depth chart. And I'll show you guys that in a moment. And so those are some of the things you want to consider. And so realistically, what you would want to do with this team and something that people probably aren't going to do, they're probably just going to start Casey Hayward on the outside and Desmond King on the outside and then Trevor Williams as the number three. But really, the best thing to do with this team specifically, based on evaluating their stats, is put Casey Hayward and Trevor Williams on the outside and let Desmond King be the inside slot corner. And so let me go ahead and show you on the depth chart uh, what that looks like, because there are these positions on the depth chart that you're gonna wanna know what they do, and you're gonna wanna be able to put in the correct players into these positions. So see, SLCB, these positions were new to Madden last year. They added in these specialist positions, and so, Instead of putting in one of the other corners, I put Desmond King in the slot. And that means that when there is a slot, when there is a third corner on the field, he will be in that spot no matter what. That's really important. You're going to want to know which positions to fill with which players, like I said. And you're going to want to know how to fill those positions and how to evaluate each position. So that's really important. That's tip number one. Now, tip number two, we're going to have to go into practice mode to show you guys a little bit of, uh, of how this is all going to work. So I think I can go into training here, go into free practice and show you guys some of 
of what we need to do. So we're going to go normal practice mode. We're going to want to be on defense so that I can show you guys exactly what we're talking about here. So advanced settings. Yeah, it's fine. doesn't matter. Let's just ready up. And then I'll probably have to flip the, flip the play because I believe it starts out on offense. But tip number two is matching personnel in game. So once you have your roster down and you understand how your roster plays, that's good because that's going to influence how you're going to call plays. But number two is that you're going to need to know what the offense is coming out and never call a defensive play before the offense calls their offensive play. And so what I mean by that is there's going to always be down in the corner of the screen a little indicator that says three wide receivers, four wide receivers, or five wide receivers. And so what you're going to want to do, I'm going to go ahead and uh, flip sides because I want to be on defense and I believe I have to uh, run a random play here for that to work but what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to know what defenses match up against what personnel on offense and I'm going to show you that right now so if the offense comes out in a two wide receiver set say they come out in two wide receivers you're going to want to come out in your heavier formations or your base three four or four three and the reason being is that you have two corners on the field during those plays. And so what well, you'll see in the 3-4 formation, I have two corners on the edges there, you can see. And in the 4-6, I have two corners on the edges. And so that will match up against two wide receiver sets. Now, if the offense comes out in three wide receiver sets, you're going to want to transition so that you have an extra corner on the field to be able to help in coverage against that third wide receiver. Those formations are going to be formations like the nickel, the nickel double A gap. Anything in the nickel formation is going to be three corners. That's what the nickel stands for. And then you can go up into heavier, you can go up into other formations. You can go with the big nickel, you can go big diamond, stuff like that. But these are designed for four and five wide receiver sets because the quarter and the big dime and formations like those have four corners or more on the field at a time. Now, what you want to know is that the difference between the nickel and the big nickel is that they substitute in on the big nickel a... Uh, a heavier formation it substitutes in I believe an extra safety as opposed to subbing in an extra corner and so the the general idea of it is that when they come out in a two wide receiver set you're going to want to be in a heavier formation that's going to allow you to match up personnel and be able to stop their run if you come out in a nickel formation and they come out in a two wide receiver set, they're going to have heavier personnel in and they're going to be able to get their blocks easier and they're going to open up holes and they're going to run easier on you. If they come out in a run play and you were coming out in say a quarter and I'm going to show you guys it right now, if you call a run play and that you're, you're coming out in a corner, a, sorry, a quarter, you're not going to be able to defend the run and I'm going to show you that right now. I think I called the wrong play, but generally speaking, you can see this is not a good formation to stop the run against. They're going to have massive holes if they choose to run the ball against this formation. I'm going to show you it one more time because I called the wrong play. Let me choose a new play. So we're going to go uh, quarter formation which is a really bad formation to call against the run because there's no heavy personnel in. And I'm just going to go with a basic halfback dive. Now, if they run this play, watch how easily they get the blocks and how big the holes are that open up. This is going to very quickly and easily demonstrate to you what I'm talking about with matching up personnel. Now, if I come out in a heavy formation, you're going to see right off the bat why you want to come out in those heavy formations. So you're going to come out in a formation like uh, like the 4-6 and come out in a cover one and then come out with a single back halfback dive. Same play, but now you can see I have more players stacked in the box and heavier personnel. And if they go ahead and run this, they got like 10, 15 yards the last time. If they go ahead and run this play, I don't know how to trigger them to run it. They're going to not be able to run the ball. You're going to be able to block shed. You're going to be able to have more people in the box to, to cut it down for a shorter game. And that's really important to note. And so see, they got a hole there on that run, but more often than not, 
you're going to be able to stack up against the run because your formation is there. Your formation is meant to stop the run. And my players are just playing poorly right now and Melvin Gordon's playing well, but you guys get the general idea that you want to match your formation. And that's key number one in addition to that that's key number one in game to stopping the run now the next thing that you want to do is you need to understand when to call certain plays and so when you're playing in the game if you're trying to if you're tr getting beat on the run early what you want to do is even if even if the offense comes out in a three wide receiver set on first down I'm always coming out in a base or heavy set on first down because the AI is programmed to run the ball on first down. They just are. It's the way that they are programmed. And so what you want to do is you want to come out in a heavier set to match up to stop the run. So if I come out in a 3-4, a base 3-4, and I just call a man coverage, and then I say I go into the gun call a three wide receiver set for example and tell them to run out of it they're not going to be able to very successfully run out of it if i am in a heavier formation so let me go ahead and pick the 01 trap and just show you guys i'm in a heavier formation they're not going to be able to run against it uh it's very easy for me to shed a block i have better heavier personnel in to stop the run the ai is just programmed they are programmed to run on first down the majority of the time. So you want to know your situation. That's an additional thing. Then, the other thing that you want to consider is that a lot of people are having trouble with stopping the run uh, early on because they're, they're, they're trying to blitz against whatever formation you're going in. Well, blitzing against the run can backfire in big ways and the reason being is that when you blitz against the run people are assigned gaps and they won't move to the running back they're going to move to their gaps so if i want to stop the run what i want to do is i want to come out in some form of a man coverage on first down you don't want to come out in a zone coverage because your players will automatically backpedal your linebackers corners and safeties will automatically backpedal at the snap because they're trying to back up into their zones so you definitely don't want to call zone coverages early on well you also don't want to blitz too much because you're going to get beat blitzing against the run your players are going to go to the wrong holes they're not going to shed their blocks and it's going to be bad for you so what you do is you go with like storm one brave for example which is just a basic man coverage on first down to attempt to stop the run and you're going to more often than not be able to get a good push defensively and stop that run because what you're going to see the difference here i'm going to show you and I picked the wrong play again. The difference is your players are going to react to that running back as opposed to reacting uh, to their zone coverages. That's really important. So let me, go, let me go ahead and show you one real quick. Single back and halfback dive. And I go cover two man. So watch here, watch how the, the linebackers react whenever they start their play. So the linebackers didn't automatically back off the line of scrimmage. Now, what you're seeing, obviously Melvin Gordon is just dominating this defense because the Chargers do have somewhat weak linebackers, but you're going to see that these guys don't back up into coverage to start the play. They're, they're just staying put where they're at, and they're reading the play. Now, if you have good linebackers, they're going to make those plays a lot quickly, a lot more easily. So that's the second one is knowing when to call certain plays. Like uh, if you're up in the game and you have a lead, you can sit back in coverage because you know that they're going to be calling pass plays. Some of the plays that I recommend for you guys, I want to show you. So if you're in a situation where you're trying to stop a run, I recommend these defenses, these heavy defenses, and calling something like either an edge blitz, some type of something that might have a little bit of an extra blitzer or something like that, but you're gonna wanna generally keep it in man coverage and react uh, accordingly. If you go into zone coverage, keep in mind your players are gonna back up and they're gonna get blocked a lot easier. So that's 
one of the things. Now, if you're trying to call um, some blitzes, you're gonna wanna go with like the nickel double A gap mid blitz. These, this is a really good play and other blitzes out of the nickel formation that are really good. Other formations, other blitzes out of the nickel that are really good are plays like the double safety blitz and stuff like that that bring extra pass rushers. And that's gonna lead us into the next tip is the, the, the way to stop the AI from beating you is to get pressure on the quarterback. And the thing behind that is you're gonna get beat. And if you're gonna get beat, you might as well go down fighting. Don't just sit back and let them tear your defense apart. Instead of sitting back and letting them tear your defense apart, come after them. Come after the quarterback, try and force him into a bad throw, try and force him into an interception. Whatever it might be, try and force the quarterback into something uh, negative. And the, the real way to do that is, and I called the wrong play again, the real way to do that is to get pressure. And so if they're going to beat you, just let them beat you. That's not a good, that's not a good way to go about things. You're going to want to go with a blitz. And, and so I'll show you this nickel double A gap blitz, this mid blitz here. Really good play against basically any type of defense. So if we go with, uh, we're going to go with like a three wide receiver set. Say we go with this, say we go with this type of set and we go with a little bit of a deep pass. We'll go four verticals and you come down and you man up blitz across and you just bring extra pressure against the quarterback. You're going to be able to generate a ton of pressure just based off the fact that you're bringing a blitz. As you can see there, I hit him before he ever has a chance to throw the ball. That's really important, guys. Don't go down without a fight. Don't just let don't just sit back in coverage and let them pick you off. Call blitzes. Call all types of different blitzes. And on the same point, on the same point it, uh, of blitzing a ton is also call bluff blitzes. So instead of calling the mid blitz maybe you call that a whole bunch of times you can fake out the ai if you keep calling mid blitz they're going to try and throw slants against it or they're going to try and throw little short passes against it so instead of calling the mid blitz go into the same formation but bluff the blitz and back off into like a cover two or something like that and then that's going to trigger them to potentially throw an interception because they're trying to read the blitz and you have short coverage on and you're going to be likely to pick off those short passes because Philip Rivers is trying to get the ball off early because he knows the blitz is coming but in reality blitz isn't coming and now we have everything covered and he either throws a bad pass or he has to check down or something like that so that's tip number four and just to summarize so far Tip number five, or sorry, tip number one is team composition. Tip number two is mat learning how to match personnel in game. Tip number three was all about, um, you know, knowing which situation to call which play in and how to stop the run and things like that. Calling man coverage on early downs and uh, and things like that in order to be able to better react to the running back. Um, and then tip number four was uh, blitzing a lot. You know, like I said, you know you're going to get beat. You're getting beat anyway, so you might as well go balls to the wall and try and blitz everybody you can and get a sack. Now, tip number five is going to be about adjustments in game. And I want to show you guys very simple adjustments that you can do in order to, you know, try and attack offenses a specific way. Um, on every single play, no matter what type of play it is, no matter what type of defense you're doing, you're going to want to try and shift players around in order to better attack the offense. And you've probably seen me doing it this entire time. So say I come out in this 3-4 odd base defense, but the offense comes out in a strong side formation. You're going to want to know what this means. So this is a strong side formation. If you come out in the base and don't move your defense at all, they're likely to get the edge on you because they have that strong side formation going. As you can see, the running back's able to get out to the edge and make that happen, but you can shift your defense. If you shift your defense in that direction towards the strong side, they're much less likely to be able to actually successfully run that play. And so that's one of the tips, one of the adjustments that you want to make pre-play is you want to always adjust to the strong side of the ball. And I want to give you a good example of how people get beat and they don't realize it. So say 
you know, they're passing on you all game long and you're getting lazy. That's really important. When people get lazy, that's when things start to go wrong. So say you're just coming out in a Tampa 2 coverage. Say they're coming out in a three wide receiver set. I'm going to give you a great example here. Say they're coming out. Uh, where's it? Where's it at? Say they're coming out in... No, not this. Say they're coming out in something like this, perhaps. Uh, I thought that I was running my offense, but apparently I'm not. Say you're coming out in a set like this, and there's the, that inside zone play. You're playing pass coverage. You don't realize, because they've been passing all game, that they're now all of a sudden going to run out of this formation, and you're not in a position to be able to stop it because you, have, you haven't you have been moving your defense all game. You haven't been adjusting to the strong side. Well, all you have to do on every single play is adjust your team to the strong side and maybe even show blitz, and you'll be able to stack that box and prevent them from running. You're going to force them into a passing play, by adjusting your defense like that. Now the box is stacked, good luck, you know, getting a good run against that. See what I'm saying? If you adjust your team to the strong side of the ball every play, you're gonna highly limit the chance that they're gonna run the ball against you. In addition to that, if you're trying to stop the run, press your corners because what happens a lot of times is your corners get blocked and they're taken completely out of the play. However, if you press triangle and press press, that's going to bring them down to the line of scrimmage and they're going to be more likely to actually get involved in the play and get off their man early because they're, they're making contact earlier. So you want to keep that in mind that you want to do things like shift your defense to the strong side. You're going to want to do things like showing blitz to bring guys down into the box like this. You're going to want to do things like pressing your corners. This is all really important stuff because if you're not making these pre-play adjustments, offenses are going to look at the weakness and they're going to go to it. Right now there's a giant hole right there to the right side and they're seeing it and they're running the ball to it. You know what I'm saying? And you have to cover for that. If that's maybe just taking a safety and bringing them down into the box or bringing a couple extra players down in, that's all you have to do in order to help stop the run. And a lot of people just choose not to do that stuff and it just kind of blows my mind. All you have to do is bring players down and focus on adjustments and that'll help you alone. Now, if you're calling the right formations, um, in addition to that, you're gonna set yourself up in a really good position to stop the AI. Now, you're not gonna stop the AI every single time. The AI are, are basically perfect. They're gonna complete every single pass that they get off. That's just the way it is. So what you have to do is you try and have to make it so that they can't complete a pass, they can't get the pass off in the first place by blitzing a ton, and you have to make it so that uh, you don't give up any run plays because the run game is what can really beat you. If you give up run plays, it's over from there because you're opening up pass plays, you're opening up play action and stuff like that. So that is what it is. So those are your five tips, guys. Just to restate your five tips for stopping the AI, at least the five most basic things that you can start doing right now to improve your game. Number one, pay attention to your team's composition. You need to know who you have and what they can do. It's really important. You need to know it and you need to know your depth as well. It's really important. Option number two to improve your game, you guys are going to want to start matching personnel. This is something that I, I put the video out on last year and a lot more people started doing it and they noticed a big difference. If you match up with the right personnel, if you stop coming out in pass coverages against heavy offenses, you're not going to let up the same types of runs. You're not going to let up the bad, you know, the big long plays and stuff like that. And likewise, if they're coming out in a five wide receiver set, don't come out in a heavy formation because you, they're just going to pass over top and get wide open. So that's tip number two. Tip number three uh, that one was all about situational football and knowing when to call specific plays. Most important tip, man coverage on first down if you're trying to stop the run. Because if you call zone coverage, people don't realize this, if you call zone coverage, your defenders just back up to start because they're trying to drop into their zones as quickly as possible. So don't call zone coverages. In addition to that, learn how to call other situational plays. Play conservative if you have a big lead. There's no need to take chances and allow them to just go downfield and score a one-play touchdown and get back into the game. That's really important. Tip number four, blitz, blitz, blitz every 
single play, every other play, every third play. Blitz as much as you can. Call every different type of blitz you can until something works. And then when you get something to work, start doing bluff blitzes and mixing in bluff blitzes and show blitz. And start trying to get pressure on the quarterback and make the quarterback nervous because that happens. It's programmed into the game that once the quarterback gets hit a couple times or gets sacked a couple times, they start scrambling and they stop looking for their targets. That's the way it works, especially against the AI. So get the quarterback uncomfortable. That one is tip number four. And then tip number five, tip number five is all about pre-play adjustments. You guys are going to want to know how to do pre-play adjustments, like shifting your defense to the correct side, showing blitz, man, you know, press man, other things that you can do that are really important. Um, you can go ahead and call like pass coverage. You can call inside coverage, all types of different things like that. So say, you know, I have them going on like a Hail Mary play. I can go ahead and go man up three deep. Let me see if I can find a concept here. Screen pass, play action pass, deep pass. Verticals. Let's just go four verticals here. Yeah, so four verticals. So I can hold L1 and put up on the right stick to, to call pass. And then I can press triangle and call over the top. If I know that they, you know, it's fourth down, they need 30 yards, call pass over the top. Give your guys an indication of what's coming. And then like, like you just see right there, they had nowhere to pass to over the top because everybody knew that's where the ball get was going. That's where the, the receivers were running. So you can do a lot of pre-play adjustments that are going to help you out quite a bit. So you want to know what they are and how to do them. Start practicing them. Start figuring out what the pre-play adjustments are. And you guys are going to be a lot better off. So with all that being said, I hope this, got, this helped you guys out. If you need a more detailed video on specifically stopping the run or stopping the pass or you need, uh, you know, those videos, like I said earlier, about which positions, you know, you guys need more detail on, you know, which stats matter for which positions, you know, it's things like that, how to evaluate positions. I'm going to be putting them up. Just let me know what position you guys want to see, and I'll put that up first. So with all that being said, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, comment from uh, any feedback you have, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good one.